Coming up on Tech News Today, we've got the hot news from Mobile World Congress. Samsung, Sony, LG's got a 3D phone and tablet. Plus, Microsoft has an October surprise, at least we think so. And HP may have actually ruined Lou Reed's legacy. It's very sad. Watch. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. What this? This is Tech News Today for Monday, February 14th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by MailRoute.info. MailRoute is a secure hosted service that provides enterprise-grade virus and spam filtering to companies of any size. Try it right now absolutely free at MailRoute.info. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jason Howell. And this is the news of the day dominated by cell phones as Mobile World Congress kicks off in Barcelona. Actually, Mobile World Congress isn't even open yet. But everybody's having all of their press announcements. Steve Ballmer had a keynote, so we are covered. We are inundated drenched, with mobile devices. Overwhelmed. And, and tablets, whether or not you call them mobile devices. Yeah, Mobile World Congress is not just about cell phones anymore. Cell phones. Who even says cell phone? <laughs> true. I feel like it's two thousand six. Yeah. It's a smartphone. Do you, we, uh, does anyone really say that either, though? Like, you don't say, let me pull out my smartphone. They just, yeah, people just say phone. phone. Yeah, it's yeah. just phone now. Unless you're an iPhone user and then you say iPhone. It's like when camera stopped being a digital camera and just right. became a camera. Right. Yeah. Then film cameras are like, no, 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 film, old school. Yeah, yeah. Film camera. Or, right. Film. <laughs> what? I know. I don't know why I'm doing it. What kind of, like a biofilm? I don't know how I'll ever get it processed. I'm uh, do that. We are hoping to get Simon Dingle on the line. He's from Tech 5 and the ZA Tech Show, a South African tech journalist uh, who's out at Barcelona, uh, but everyone is in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress, so the bandwidth is gone. A lot of phone usage. Yeah, we had him We had him connected upstairs but in the prep for a short period of time that was pretty good, uh, so we're, we're still working. Jason's furiously working to connect him right now. That's the clicks you hear in the background. Yeah, but meanwhile, uh, let's get into some of the announcements. Yesterday, Samsung announced the Galaxy Tab 10.1. It is their big screen. In other words, the same size as every other Android tablet. Uh, it comes with Android 3.0 stock honeycomb. No, no little overlay. 1280 by 800 resolution on the screen. 1 gigahertz dual core Tegra 2, 16 or 32. Stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> Wi-Fi, 3G. Uh, 1.23 pounds, so it's actually lighter than the Zoom or the iPad. Yeah, so I would say, uh, with the exception of cameras, which the iPad has neither of yet anyway, it sounds a lot like the Zoom, except that the Zoom is even heavier than the iPad. So oh, right, I forgot, like, front and rear facing camera, yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is, I mean, it's it, it's because there's no, what, like a metal casing it's like a plastic outer yeah shell. the, uh, so the that's screen how they, goes almost all the way to the end that's so how they save nice on, the, on the um on the uh the weight it'll launch in march uh, first in asia and europe coming to uh, vodafone in europe no u.s details yet but uh there it is if you're looking at the video version it's a uh it's a nice looking tablet actually this the the, the bezel looks much bigger here than i remember it so uh, it doesn't the the screen doesn't quite go to the edge yeah, it it's weird because the the trend seems to be the simpler the front the better. You know, everyone's like no buttons, no nothing. But then there's no branding. I mean, there's branding on the back at least in this case. But when you look at it, um, I mean, I guess Apple doesn't have any branding either on. No, their they front. just have the Apple on the back. They just you you're just used to that little single button obviously being an iPad. But I wonder if this is something that they're going to have to address because I mean. Imagine if some Samsung television didn't say Samsung on it. That just wouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, they always want their, their little, uh, and their it little really logo does, in your living room. It really does start to look like every other tablet you've seen. Mm -hmm. I was more impressed by the Samsung Galaxy S2, uh, which was the smartphone, a big smartphone announcement. Uh, that is now official. A dual-core, 1 gigahertz CPU, 4.3-inch Super AMOLED Plus screen, uh, and uh, thin, 8.49 millimeters. You could cut yourself with this phone. You should be careful. Also comes with Android 2.3 Gingerbread, although we'll have the customized TouchWiz 
interface uh, and comes with near field communications. Why do they do this proprietary Android build on? Is it just because they want to bundle in some apps that you don't want? Because nobody <laughs> yes, seems to that like seems, that any seems of to be this, exactly right? it. Yeah. Uh, everybody thinks that they can improve on the Android interface and distinguish themselves. And yeah. HTC is the one uh, that has been able to do that. People do say, oh, I do like the touch UI from HTC. Right. The I'm sorry, the sense UI from, from HTC. I mean, in essence, that's one of the beauties of Android is that it can be customizable. But yeah. You always have to wonder if other things are bundled in that uh, that ruin the experience in other ways. It's pretty, though. Uh, you know, I, from all accounts, uh, the screen is amazing. It's a little smaller. Mm -hmm. Um what do you what do you think? I not, like it actually. You're not I mean, the market for a new phone. This but is, this is were, a nice thin phone with a big screen. The screen's not too big for me. I like a big screen. That may be a negative for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's it's got you know it's got all the features I want. If I if I wanted an Android phone, this would be pretty compelling. Problem for me is it's coming to Europe and Asia this month. We still don't again don't have any U.S. details on it yet. Or pricing? No, no pricing. Although, how much would you pay? Not an unsubsidized. Right. But with subsidy, I'd pay two hundred dollars. Yeah, two hundred. That's that's probably so that's where it's going to come spot. in. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, you know, I wish that I I was watching this video. It's like it doesn't at least when you're looking at it head on. I'd like to see how thin. It doesn't look like it's that thin. I mean, I believe you're it's right. thin. Yeah. It's not like really as thin as I believe it uh, here at the beginning. They kind of flip it over to the side. See, that doesn't look. That well, we don't know thin how big that guy's me. hand is. Well, that's I mean, the assuming if that was my hand, that's actually a baby. That hand. would be huge. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I see uh, what you're saying. Yeah, it's like it's a Jason's big, daughters. A, a big right. giant hand. Well, you know, the four inch, you can kind of get a sense of that. All right, let's move on to LG, uh, which went all 3D crazy, announcing a 3D phone and a 3D tablet. The Optimus 3D is the phone. Uh, everybody's 4.3 inches is the new thing. 4.3 inch display glasses free 3d yes. display so it's doing lenticular like the nintendo 3ds uh one gigahertz dual core processor uh two five megapixel cameras allowing recording in 3d comes with android 2.3 gingerbread uh has a 1080p display in 2d or if you're doing 3d 720p and allows you to share 3d videos on youtube with a new partnership so you can Use a hotkey to switch the user interface back and forth. If you don't want to deal with 3D, it can make it look 2D. And the folks who have reviewed it said that that looked pretty good. It's weird. So there's two cameras, and that's how they create the 3D effect. Yeah, right next to each other. So when you're toggling it off, does it just use the camera on the left, or do you actually get you know, that's two a really recorded good question. video files? The toggling changes the interface, but I don't know when you're taking a photo yeah. if there's toggle. I, there'd have yeah, to there be. There has to be, yeah. And so I guess that would be it. They would have to turn off. That's a good question, though. Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder how that works. Yeah. I wonder if there would be any incentive to being able to pick which... The lenses must be so close together that it probably, They're probably doesn't identical, matter. They're probably identical, right? Yeah. So it probably yeah. doesn't matter. But that would be cool if you could switch. Yeah. You know, and get like a little parallax. They just want you to shoot everything in 3D and put it up on YouTube's new 3D video channel. Uh, it, it's kind of small. I mean, for 3D video, it's 8 gigabytes internal. And uh, coming to Europe in Q2. I just can't see this being a hit. I just can't. Really? 3D? 3D phone? I, That's going to suck a lot of people in, don't you think? I think it'll suck a few, right oh, okay. a few people in. A few people in. I just don't... I have not heard uh, the wailing demand for 3D phones now, anywhere. On the video uh, version, you've been seeing the Optimus Pad, which is the uh, G Slate that we've been hearing is coming to T-Mobile here in the United States. Uh, this is allowing also 3D recording with two 5-megapixel cameras, but you need glasses to see the 3D on the Optimus Pad or the G Slate. 8.9-inch uh, display, and they made a big deal about how 8.9 inches is so much better. And, and, and we have been saying everything's 10 inches, everything's 10 inches, or 7 inches in the case of the playbook and the, uh, and the tab. They, they were kind of funny about touting 8.9. It's a revolution. Yeah, it was the, <laughs> and an LG executive apparently said, you know, the, the smaller tablets are just blowing up smartphones, but the larger tablets are so easy to get overwhelmed. You know, where it's like... Really? We were joking before the show. It's like, it's like an infomercial. Yeah. Like, are you tired of little tiny That's tablets seven. that you can't even see? Or overwhelmed by all the screen real estate on your iPad? Oh, it's too much screen real I'm estate. Just, I'm just overwhelmed. It's what am too I going to do? 
I don't. I don't. I don't think either of them are. It's. It's just a matter of preference. Uh, the Optimus Pad, eight point nine inch display, also is a twelve eighty by seven sixty eight resolution, one gigahertz dual core Tegra two processor. That's that's the thing these days with the kids. Ten eighty p video because you need the glasses, you get the ten eighty p in three D as well mm. with HDMI out support and coming in the spring to select markets. The fact that the tablet requires glasses and the phone doesn't just automatically makes the tablet to me seem like a novelty, but the phone to potentially have a little bit more utility for being 3D. Yeah, you know, what you I know mean? that's a good point. That's a good point. The, the, the needing the glasses keeps it gimmicky yeah, for me. Absolutely. And not needing but the, the phone, glasses. And from what, I, from what we, uh, I read earlier about the phone, it's actually, I mean, it's just as impressive as the uh, Nintendo 3DS, the 3D effect with it. Um, yeah. You know, that could be actually, that could be very useful. Very, Again. Very cool, at least, uh, at least as if you don't need the glasses. You if, know? if you really want to take 3D videos and share them on YouTube, then I think that the phone is compelling depending on the price. Yeah. That's really what it's going to depend on. If this thing is... Four hundred dollars with subsidy. Forget about it. It's not. It's that's not enough. If it's if no. it's competitive to the other phones out there on the market, like around two hundred, even two hundred fifty. Yeah, I would maybe say, pay yeah. a fifty dollar premium with subsidy for that three D effect. But yeah, it's kind of like three D on TVs. It has to kind of just be another it's thing. Also, it's not the I reason mean, you buy the phone. Let's not forget of all the really terrible two D videos that are out there. <laughs> uh, just having three D capability does so not mean better. that the majority yeah. of people with that capability are going to upload compelling c yeah. content to YouTube. Just Stop talking sense, Lane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, of course, Friday, we mentioned uh, Nokia and Microsoft announced their big partnership. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve Ballmer was brought on stage at the Capital Markets announcement, uh, and Stephen Elop and him shared a hug or something, I'm sure. Tender uh, moment. Today at Mobile World Congress, uh, both of them are there. Yesterday, Nokia had their announcement, and essentially, Stephen Elop just went through the whole song and dance again and defended the partnership of Nokia and Microsoft. Steve Ballmer got on stage uh, for the opening keynote of Mobile World Congress today and announced some new details about Windows Phone 7. So the January update will be coming in March. Uh, and they defended that later by saying, well, it was a January update because we delivered it to OEMs in January for testing. Mm. Anyway, uh, Windows Phone 7 update with copy and paste, support for CDMA coming in early March. So that means you'll start to be able to see a Verizon and Sprint Windows Phone uh, coming in early March. Microsoft also showed off the next version of Windows Phone 7 to come after that, which they say will be later. The rumor is it might come around October and be called Windows Phone 7 2.0. Uh, that shows off multitasking, which is not available right now, Twitter integration, uh, support for cloud-stored office docs, and the full version of Internet Explorer 9 uh, with hardware accelerator. The October date sounds about right. Cause isn't that when there are also some rumors that the, uh, the Windows Phone... Uh, Nokia phones could yeah. come out around that time as well. During the Nokia announcement yesterday, they invited Joe Harlow up on stage, uh, and she kind of dropped a hint saying that, yes, we expect to be shipping in bulk in 2012, but my boss would be much happier if the timing of the initial launch was 2011. Which is, I know that sort and of October's the last supposed quarter, to be so. sort of coy, but I don't think you'd say that unless you really were shooting. If you thought, like, we can get one out. We can get one out by, right. the, by Q4. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that's absolutely right. Um, there is also uh, the multitasking on Windows Phone 7 is going to use cards, very similar to WebOS. So they're, they're taking a page out of that. Mm, yeah. I will be very curious to see how well this works. I do like the way WebOS implements it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, but I kind of like the way BlackBerry on the Playbook uh, does their multitasking, their mobile multitasking. Which is similar, but it's got it feels more like real multitasking. The cards thing still feels like things are paused, and you flip back and forth between them. With the BlackBerry, you're, you can see they're actually still running. Uh, the other thing that was more impressive to me was uh, Windows Phone Seven Xbox Connect integration, and they showed off the Rally Ball video, uh, which allows you to throw the balls with your Windows Phone 7 phone at a person who's using Connect to play Rally Ball. So the idea is just that they work in conjunction with each other. Yeah. And you've the, got a and, Windows and Phone and live you're, at, gaming. At, you're at yeah. your friend's house or, or not. Well, I think you'd have to be in the same in room. In the same room. Otherwise, it, it would be, you, you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't have to be, but I, I think it'd be uh, hard to, to aim the... Have fun. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Threw it at you. Because the, the idea is you're playing the rally ball, and if you haven't played rally ball in Connect, balls come at you, and you have right. to just knock them with real motion, right? Uh, and then when you put in Windows Phone 7, people who have a Windows Phone can throw the balls. And, of course, I know the folks Microsoft makes the cheesiest Watching the really audio do. version of this did not see that commercial. But, I mean, that doesn't even really look like fun. He was just like, Bleh. Yeah, because there's two people with Windows Phones just barraging him. Right. They they loved it. Yeah, it could be fun. Probably. Drinking probably them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Sony also went on stage yesterday, announced a couple new phones, the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pro mm -hmm. uh, with the slide-out keyboard, kind of similar to the, the, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S2, uh, but with a smaller screen and a slide-out keyboard. Uh, and Otherwise, the, these the, all the specs all are the really specs. starting to... Yeah. Everybody's resembling Starts each other that much more. And they also announced a, uh, a low-end phone called the Sony Ericsson Neo, but the star of the show was the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pro. Play, which we finally got the details about. It'll be available in March in the United States on Verizon uh, in early spring. So it'll be available in March, but on Verizon in early spring. I guess that means it might be delayed on Verizon. Not sure. Comes with Android 2.3, Gingerbread, uh, and multiplayer gaming promising 50 titles One of them at is launch. Guitar Hero. So. Yeah. What's wrong with Guitar Hero? Isn't Guitar Hero going away? Yeah. Well, yeah, but... You can still one enjoy last, it on your one last yeah. hurrah. On that's your, right. Yeah. That's right. It, Guitar Hero has gone mobile. That's right. It's not gone. It's just smaller. It's just gone Assassin's Creed, Dead Space, so. Reckless Racing. Uh, yeah, the fifty titles. You know, that's a good launch. FIFA ten. Dungeon yeah. Defenders Wave two. Everything else about that, you know, it's funny is we don't have as much to say about the play because so many things were leaked about it that were like, yeah, it's got the little thumbstick controllers and it's got the, all the buttons from the Sony and yeah, it's called the play. We knew we knew all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, we knew it all. Uh, so really, really nothing that much new uh, from Sony about the play. Wall Street Journal is jumping into the fray with TechCrunch and Bloomberg to say, yes, there will be a mini iPhone. Uh, Wall Street Journal says it'll be half the size of the iPhone. Uh, but otherwise, they they went along with all of the things that we mentioned on Friday about the rumor of a small iPhone. Uh, Wall Street Journal source proved more talkative after getting an eyeful of Samsung and Sony announcements this morning. According to an update on Engadget, uh, the publication's article has been updated to read that the device is significantly lighter than the iPhone 4, has an edge-to-edge -edge touchscreen, and voice-based navigation. Now, that is all rumor-mongering but not even close to the rumor-mongering over at cultofmac.com where Leander Connie says he's got a source that claims the iPhone Nano, or whatever it's called, will have no memory for onboard storage of media. Our source says, by some memory, we mean all of the memory. The iPhone Nano will have no memory for onboard storage. It will be a cloud-based device. So it's just like... I don't know. I mean, you listen to your Pandora station, and yeah, it would, it would everything. Uh, everything would stream to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like they were comparing it to the way Apple TV works. Apple TV has limited onboard storage, but uh, not and, no and you, onboard storage. Well, no, and they actually to have zero. They is... clarified the article later, and their source said, "By no storage, I'm not 100 percent sure on the amount of memory available for the user. I know there's some memory, but it acts more like the memory on the Apple TV." So it could be up to 8 gigabytes. I think that. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, that's what he said. Oh, really? But it includes 8 gigabytes. It could be 8 gigabytes. So nothing. So Basically when I say zero. absolutely nothing, I mean less than Somewhere 10. Somewhere between 0 and 8 gigabytes. Well, the idea, I mean, the thing is, Apple's App Store is not going to stream to a device. So this would be limited in, in what it could use. I would guess it wouldn't have the ability to install apps. It would just come with particular apps. Right, and we talked about that. And it would that. stream video. This would go along with Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg and others saying Mobile Me would become free. Right. Well, this is also, it's a good experiment for them to... Um, to focus more on cloud-based services and see if it works for folks. I mean, I know that that's part of the whole nano idea anyway, is you're not taking it all with you. You're syncing what you need at the time, and then you go off and do your thing, and, and your home base isn't in your pocket in, on this tiny little device. This all sounds, it still sounds kind of weird to me, but it also sounds like they're, you know, the rumor has legs. So I'm interested. Yeah, but the whole cloud, you know, cloud mobile me streaming to the phone or streaming to the portable device for Apple has been a rumor that's been threatening for a couple of years now and hasn't hasn't come to fruition. Like they keep thinking that, oh, iTunes is going to get, you know, go cloud-based and you'll be able to stream your library and stuff like that. But, but maybe, that maybe that's why this may actually be real because those rumors... 
you know, if you go back in, in time, I have they a, eventually kind of come around. Those you know? rumors, those rumors haven't had any legs up to this point because there haven't also been any other room. And this is total rumor mongering crap, but yeah. there haven't been any independent confirmations that Apple has been able to strike a deal with the recording industry right. Right. and with Sony out there saying like, we don't even know if we want to be on iTunes in the future. It's obviously not good relations with them and they have to strike those deals to make this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, and, and they bought Lala.com to do this, to be able to stream some kind of media from the cloud. But until they get the permission and they strike the licensing deals, it's not going to happen. So even if there is an iPhone Nano in the works, and even if there is a plan to make mobile be free, Apple may still not know if they can implement it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably less about, you know, build, building the hardware itself and more about can we actually use our Lala infrastructure to, yeah. to make something happen. Yeah, it's... it's Although... Play, people are getting really used to this cloud-based music, though. And, absolutely. And, you know, that's another incentive is, like, once iTunes is forced to change because it becomes clunky and archaic then they just have to go along. They have to figure out how to strike these deals. Apple has also been good at starting a service with only one partner. Remember, they only had, I believe it was NBC when they launched TV shows on iTunes. They yeah, only had Universal right. when they launched music on iTunes. Hmm. Yeah, uh, right. And then they eventually show that, hey, you want to be in here. You want to join us. So I guess it's possible if all they got was, say, EMI to mm -hmm. sign on, that they'd go ahead and launch the service. Or they just go balls out and say, look, it's your files. You have the right to store them wherever you want. We're just going to allow people to store them on mobile me in the cloud, and we're not going to get involved as a start to this. And it wouldn't be some kind of subscription service. And then the music companies lose out entirely. At least they lose out on any extra money. Right. right. Interesting op-ed article up on Ars Technica today from James Losey and uh, Cheyu Lu, Lee, uh, and I apologize uh, for the pronunciation. They are program associates uh, and policy analysts, respectively, with the New America Foundation's Open Technology Initiative, talking about President Obama's plan to roll out 4G to the country uh, by auctioning off 500 megahertz space uh, that we talked about this last week. What they're saying in this op-ed is, what does 4G mean? Because that might not be such a good idea. You could argue that we have coverage across 98% of the country already, if you count AT&T's HSPA+. Here's the breakdown. Uh, in the United States, Verizon LTE gives you 5 to 12 megabits per second. Sprint WiMAX gives you 3 to 6 megabits per second. T-Mobile HSPA+, plus theoretically peaks at 21 megabits per second, which sounds great, but PhoneScoop has done some testing and found it's really about 2 to 5 megabits per second in practice. So these are none of them supposed to be called 4G, but the International Telecommunications Union allows them to be called 4G, even mm -hmm. though they're really just 3G standards. Mm. Over across the rest of the world, we see examples of what 4G is supposed to look like. Telia Sonera, uh, does an LTE in Scandinavia that averages 20 to 80 megabits per second. Vodafone in Germany, LTE, 50 megabits per second. NTT Docomo LTE in Japan, 37 megabits per second. Even in Taiwan, VMAX, WiMAX, 16 megabits per second. So I'll take any of those. Yeah, we, we are way behind in infrastructure rollout and calling these single-digit megabit per second technologies 4G is... It's a lie. Well, okay, so when you explain that, that all makes sense, and we go, okay, so 4G is more of a theoretical type of a thing that in practice is not available to a lot of folks. But for anybody who didn't just hear that or didn't read this article or doesn't quite understand what 4G is and say, 4G is better than 3G, therefore I want a 4G phone. Right. I mean, is this the sort of thing where there should be some law stating that if you can't get a certain level of bandwidth, you cannot call something 4G. Well, that's what the ITU is supposed yourself. to be doing, but ITU backpedaled and said, all right, fine, you can call WiMAX and LTE 4G. You, it's just, you might, might as well. I mean, talk about co confusing the consumers. So now 4G is worthless. 4G means almost 4G nothing. just means faster than what you've come to expect exactly. from 3G. Yeah, all 4G means is on that particular carrier, it's faster than the other thing they were putting out called yes. 3G. Right. We were talking to Patrick Norton when he was on the, the show a few weeks ago, and he was talking about how he has 4G capability on his phone, but it just reverts back to 3G and 4G is not available, which, right. it, which it isn't anywhere that we are. 
Well, I, actually, they've turned it on in San, in Francisco? San Francisco. They just haven't rolled it out too Maybe far Maybe he was talking about it. one of his desert trips or whatever. But Probably. yeah, it's like, I mean, what is really, what, what, are, you, what are you really getting? If you're mm -hmm. getting the speed, great. If you're not, people shouldn't be duped. And this is, you know, and the other they problem be is, paying more, is there's, there's be. also all of this confusion about, uh, you know, T-Mobile has 21 megabits per second. Well, theoretically, yes, that is the back. It can peak out at that. But in practice, you don't get anywhere near that. Uh, so it just, it, it really is confusing. And when you're talking about starting in a policy initiative for the entire United States based on rolling out 4G, well, you may end up rolling out something that's only three megabits per second. Mm -hmm. And that's not really what we're after. If we're trying to get rid of this Sputnik moment, as the president has said, we need to be going for 20 to 50 megabit per second wireless connectivity. I think that they should outlaw theoretical speeds and they should be forced to give you a median speed. Yeah. Given the, like the lowest and the highest potential, like what is it in the But then who's in charge middle? of testing that? Because oh. if the company does it, it's going to, you know, it's going to be like, hey, we reached very close to I theoretical know. every time. Yeah, I know. It's true. It's still, it's... it's and that's how they talk. It's confusing. <laughs> It is confusing. It's really absolutely. confusing. Uh, Radiohead is trying to make things less confusing. Last time they put out an album in Rainbows, they allowed you to pay whatever you wanted. Talk about confusing. Well, a lot of people just didn't pay anything. Right. But a lot of people did pay yes. something. And it ended up being a top-selling album, even though they had been allowing you to get it for free. Well, I think there were a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you know, one being that people want to pay for good music. You know, yeah. It was a popular album. They liked um, the band. They liked the band, and they respected the fact that the band was like, we will let you choose how much you feel we're worth. Mm -hmm. So if you, if somebody says something like that, you're more likely to uh, to get my respect, and I'll give you 20 bucks. Well, they've got a, uh, a new plan for you uh, right. for their next album, The King of Limbs. Which I had no, which was not on my radar at all, by the way. No one's, no, no one's radar. Because I'd read something a while ago that said they weren't doing studio. Oh, I've always anymore. wanted to be king of limbs. Um, a few <laughs> not so much torsos, but limbs, yeah. Limbs, limbs are pretty awesome, yeah. you got to admit. A few months ago, they had had a cryptic, uh, like an image up on their website that know, alluded to working on something, but that's yeah. the last I heard. Anyway. They have a new plan for charging, but this time it's not pay whatever you want. They're going to offer it themselves in four different ways. 320 kilobit per second MP3s will cost you $9 or six pounds. Uncompressed waves, which are a higher quality, will cost you $14 or nine pounds for the albums. Now, if you would like to have physical copies, you can buy a CD and two vinyls. So it's like a two record set. Plus you get the MP3 downloads at 320 kilobits per second for 30 pounds or $48. Or you can get the two record set, one CD, and the uncompressed wave downloads for thirty-three pounds or fifty-three dollars, and both of those come with copious artwork in addition to the physical media. Uh, in in uh, I don't know. In reality, even though I'm a really big Radiohead fan and I'm totally going to get this album, I'm not going to pay for the vinyl. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna get package. the nine bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because it's, I it's I good enough. I have a tin ear. I can't I can't hear the difference anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you, Jason Howell, <gasps> do not have tin ears. Yeah, what are you going to do here? You are. You can tell the difference. Yeah, I don't know. When I first saw this, I was like, oh, I'll just get the MP3, only because that's that's just how I listen to music now. I listen to them in a compressed format. But, um, I mean, you know, they sell it as as an uncompressed wave, which I think is pretty pretty cool that it's they're right. not even going uh lo you know lossless like flat so you're gonna anything. go wave but what about the physical media do you gonna pop i don't, I don't need no. you're gonna pop for the extra 20 to 30 dollars don't just, need i, mean, I don't it, even have a record player or anything, you don't so. you're not that big of a fan you know, of, i you don't do and i'm still and not gonna buy it the, what's weird about it is like okay two vinyls so it's like an album split into two fine then you got a cd yeah then you get your downloads and you get some artwork so it's like You've, if you've got your downloads, what are you going to do with the CD? Yeah, the CD does seem give a little odd. Mom. Like, just give me the vinyl. Right. And the, you know. It's almost like they're giving you... They're giving the you, you everything for you, you and a couple think friends. You need. It's a backup. Yeah. You know what I mean? Consider right. it a, a, a backup in case your 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 uh, MP3s get deleted. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get get the uh, digitized music off a of CD. Knowing uh, a lot of folks who are uh, vinyl collectors who go to Amoeba Music, which is this like crazy record store in San Francisco, and buy all sorts of prices for rare Japanese imports, all of these prices seem pretty reasonable. 
even mm. if you were going to spring for the, the cool version. Really? Okay. Because they seemed a little high to me, but then I also was like, but you're getting a CD, artwork, LPs, yeah. and digital copies. I like to, I'd like to know what copious artwork means. Like how much? And it, like when a you, warehouse of artwork? Or? When you think about it from the perspective of what is your lowest cost to enter into this album, it's $9. Right. That's not bad yeah, nine for what sounds to totally be a double fine. disc. Yeah. I'd pay so. eight ninety nine on iTunes for this in a heartbeat. So totally. why not buy it straight from Radiohead and cut out the middleman? Yeah, it's mm. nice. They're giving you, uh, you know, in Rainbows, the album that they let you get for free if that's what you wanted to do, where you named your price nine dollar. Anything below nine dollars would have felt like I was ripping them off anyway. Mm. So it's like they I only gave paid me five dollars for the last one. You did? Yeah. Did you feel bad about it? No. Because it's a really good album. No. No, because they let you do it. They're just files. You weren't you weren't breaking the law. Yeah, and lots of people did it for free. I actually gave them money. Yeah, yeah I did too. <laughs> All right. Well, Radiohead, once again, paving the way. Paving a different way. I like way. that they're trying. Leave it up to the you road to decide less what that's I like that way. they're like saying, "Okay, we tried this last time. Let's try this. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna try to learn from this." On now to the news fuse. <laughs> I get so disappointed when it pops up. <laughs> Apple just became Samsung's biggest customer. Reports indicate the two companies are finalizing a $7.8 billion deal believed to include liquid crystal display panels for the next iPad, as well as mobile application processors and NAND flash memory chips for iPhones and iPads. Wonder if the deal includes those super PLS panels with their wider viewing angle and the better outdoor visibility, because I can't see my iPad when I'm outside. No, I can't read on my roof. Yep. And it's ruining my life. Just, ki just kidding. But outdoor visibility would be nice. The MPEG standards body, which is one of the grandparents of video compression, has announced plans for its own royalty-free codec. At a meeting in March, the organization will accept proposals for a new video compression technology designed to provide better performance than MPEG-2 under a royalty-free license. So it looks like Google's WebM attempt has another threat to deal with. Yeah. If this, if this works out, if MPEG puts out a royalty-free MPEG... Forget it. It's over for WebM. And then we got to have another browser war of who's going to support the new MPEG. Oh, thing. my gosh. Uh, that Friendster thing did not work out so well. Hey, it had its day. But Kleiner, Perkins, Caulfield, and Byers uh, figured they'd give investing in a social network another go. VentureWire reports today that Kleiner is buying as much as $38 million of stock from Facebook shareholders at a valuation of $52 billion for the company. That's a bit higher than the $50 billion price tag that Goldman Sachs and DST Global set recently. Oh, Friendster. If only Friendster had pulled in that kind of money. Qualcomm's had some big announcements at MWC touting their forthcoming 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon family available in single, dual, or quad core. The new chipsets are codenamed Crate and feature, among many other things, a power consumption drop of 65%, which is quite a bit. Separately, Qualcomm announced future chips would support Netflix streaming, DRM, paving the way for Netflix on Android. And the chip announcements keep coming at Mobile World Congress. Marvell unveiled their 1.2 gigahertz PXA978 chip, combining three. 3G UMTS and China's popular TDSCMA on one world phone chip. Plus, they unveiled their own Android based platform called Kinoma Play. Also, Intel announced its next generation phone chip, codenamed Medfield, and trumpeted their Valentine's Day love for Migo, even if Nokia has abandoned them. They said, We're disappointed in Nokia. They actually said that. Hmm. I'm disappointed in you, Nokia. Oh, it's worse. It's so much worse than Ouch. being angry. I'm not yeah. angry. I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed I expected you. better from you. I'm just yeah. really disappointed. RIM has added two more playbooks to their lineup. LTE and HSPA Plus versions will come along in the second half of this year, 2011. The previously announced Wi-Fi only and WiMAX versions are still on track for a March or an April release. And Jim, is it Ball Silly? Ball Silly. Ball Silly told Engadget that they should be priced less than 500 and less with carrier subsidies. Spammers would be well advised not to steal pictures for their messages from Image Shack. Image Shack has been replacing pictures known to have appeared in spam with warnings such as do not buy, this is a scam. Image Shack's system is capable of swapping thousands of the spammers' images for warnings within an hour of them being reported. If the graduate happened today instead of plastics, young Benjamin might have been advised by Mr. McGuire to get into data analytics. Two words. Data analytics, remember that. And that's just what HP is doing, announcing uh, uh, this morning that it has signed an agreement to acquire analytical database provider Vertica 
for an undisclosed amount, but that gives HP a competitor for IBM's, Neteza, EMC's Green Plum, and one-time partner Oracle. Ooh, HP and Oracle mm. don't like each other mm. so much. Mm. Mm -mm. Did you watch the Grammys yesterday? Sure did. Uh, did you see the HP ad? Somehow I missed it. Well, actually, I know exactly how I missed it because I, yeah, yeah. I, I purposely started the show like half an hour. You know, what's funny is I uh, was listening to an audio book sitting mm -hmm. next to Eileen while she was watching the Grammys, and I looked up at one point and saw the HP ad, and I was like, oh, look at that. They're advertising the touchpad and all the touch stuff. Hey, HP on the Grammys is pretty cool. Uh, I didn't listen to it, though. I didn't, you know, because I had earphones in, so... Let's hear. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I yeah. Guess, uh, yeah. Yeah. This neat. This seems. So neat. it just looks like a, a typical tech. Well, it's kind of you know, dig. Is everybody you know. Skype? Everybody post. Vom.com. Everybody dream. Everybody sprint. Everybody air. Everybody print. Everybody really? Print. Everybody frag. Everybody. Everybody tweet. frag. Everybody shuffle. Everybody beat. Everybody oh puke. Oh my god. It's not even the lyrics. Yeah. Everybody mobile, everybody global. Everybody, everybody mobile, everybody, everybody global. <sighs> it's like built for an instant on world. HP computers do not turn instantly on. on. Everybody instant, everybody on. Uh, for more businesses yeah, it's, it's and more. Kind of brutal. Yeah. Uh, so this has people in an uproar. <sighs> I'm a little surprised, although I get it. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of uncomfortable. Are they in an uproar because it's made a mockery like of it. the popular Lou Reed song? Of Lou Reed, yeah. Now, I, I Walk on the wild probably side. a lot of the younger folks who watch the commercial maybe know that, that, that the tune of the song, but don't really care that it's become a commercial. Lou Reed doesn't seem like the kind of person you would associate with doing something like this, though. Well, he may not have the rights to this song. Yeah, I, I don't really know what the situation is there. But, yeah, so many people, even people in the chat room right now are like, what did they do to that song? They that ruined it. a travesty. It. No, they ruined yeah. it. Uh, but, but a lot of songs are ruined by commercials. This is just the latest, and it particularly stings because he it's, says something like, everybody worse. mobile, yeah. everybody global. Right. And that I just, you know, I want to cry. And at least sometimes they just play the song. Like when Nike took Revolution by the Beatles. Well, a lot of people they, thought that was travesty, but they just played the song. They can't really just play Walk on the Wild I Side, understand. <laughs> <laughs> Although that would have been made a much more interesting commercial if they had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should have seen her go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the calendar. Okay. AT&T is adding a $35 3 gigabyte plan and cutting their 5 gigabyte plan to 50 bones for laptop connect devices. Hey, babe. Want to see my touchpad? <laughs> Put your touchpad away. Uh, Netflix arrives on Boxy today. I do not have a Boxy box. Tom, I know you do. Yes, I do. So now you have all sorts of other options. That's in right. You know, if uh, I have the Boxy box out in the front room and I end up using the Roku box for Netflix all the time, mm -hmm. but now I have another option. You sure do. And so does anyone else uh, who has Boxy box. Motorola Zoom is coming to Europe uh, second quarter of this year. Yay! Europeans rejoice. HTML5 spec set is set for the second quarter of 2014 for completion, so... Still a ways to go on that. Taking their time on that one. Yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It just takes years. <laughs> you can't brush standards. No. Well, you can, but it's probably not a good idea. IBM's Watson Supercomputer is set to take on Jeopardy Champs tonight through Wednesday. If you needed something to do on Valentine's Day, you're welcome. Yeah, and if you have a date planned or whatever, just, you know, watch this before the Make date. Make this Nothing part of the sets day. the mood you know? for Valentine's this is, Day this like is this. A cool hey, honey. 7 to 7.30 before kind we of head out, free romance. Let's pretend we're 65 and watch Jeopardy. Listen, I watch Jeopardy almost every day. Do you really? Okay. I would say a few yeah. times a week I watch Jeopardy while I'm making dinner right. because you know why? I learn things. It's true. That's I never knew any of the answers, but I usually my retain, always watched it. I retain a piece of trivia or two. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to a voicemail sent to 260 TNT show that is very important for the city of Detroit and probably Eminem. Hey, TNT crew. This is Alex Corzin from up here in Michigan. And we're cold and apparently bored up here. So bored, somebody decided to start a Kickstarter project in order to build a statue of Robocop up in Detroit. So if you were bored and have a few extra dollars to spare, head over to DetroitNeedsRobocop.com for more deep details. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Bye. DetroitNeedsRoboCop.com. You must go there now because you can help. Uh, yes, you too can help. 
They're they're already at eighteen thousand two hundred twenty eight dollars pledged. Thirty six percent funded. How with forty oh, so that, days left? So they need what? So that implies they need like six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars. On one hand, mm. I'm like, this is the awesomest thing I've ever heard of, yes. and I hope Detroit gets Robocop immediately. On another hand, I think it's so easy for them to have raised so much money, and a lot of that money is obviously people being like, huh, Robocop. Oh, they need $50,000. That's what they need. They need $50,000 yeah. for a Robocop statue. Maybe Detroit could do something else with $50,000. That's, that's true. Just saying. <sighs> I, be I, down I, there. I know. I'm just. I'm. I'm the voice of the. People. I mean, is this the fully functional operating exactly. that can I help assume with crime? So. No. I assume they're going to attack Cleveland with right. it first. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's true. RoboCop fights crime. He's going. Yeah, to- you build RoboCop. That's why you build RoboCop to help you fight crime. To build actual RoboCop, it would be more than fifty grand. You guys. How this do you is, know? This is just RoboCop <laughs> sitting really still. Do the math. <laughs> <laughs> on to the emails TNT at twit.tv uh, Tom the power systems engineer says the one thing you missed with the Nokia Microsoft coverage is the huge shadow this agreement cast over QT the beloved development framework behind many open source projects such as VLC and KDE Nokia bought its developer troll tech a few years back to enable right once deploy anywhere apps for their mobile systems QT will not be ported to Windows Phone 7 which leaves Nokia as the one company not allowing QT on their phones and could mean strong cuts in QT's development funding. Both desktop and mobile users are, of course, not amused by Nokia's decision and see a similar situation looming as with Oracle and OpenOffice, and some are even calling for KDE to fork QT under its free QT agreement, while others would like QT to be sold to Intel to ensure a proper development budget. Uh, so, yeah, Nokia may be risking the advantage of being the keeper of the right once deploy anywhere framework. Things are changing around Nokia pretty fast. Uh, next email comes from Sam in New Jersey. Thanks for the great show. Thanks for watching, Sam. In TNT episode 178, while discussing Whisper Systems' new secure calling solution for Android, Sarah sounded surprised that Android only has a 3% market share. Um, as an Android developer with a Hebrew based application, I think I can explain. Up through Froyo and possibly Gingerbread, Google had not officially supported right-to-left languages such as Hebrew or Arabic. Oh. They can cause issues such as sentences displaying out of order if they, can, if they contain numbers, text displaying backwards in some apps, justification problems. There's a well-known bug that describes this and not being able to reasonably communicate in your native language Definitely. and obviously hold back Android application in a country. Hopefully these issues will soon be a thing of the past. Older devices will be updated to fix the bug as well, hopefully. At least I can hope. Uh, that is such a good point, Sam. It's not even yeah. something that I had I had thought about. Thanks obviously, for the insight. Um, this they, is what I love about our audience. Me because too. we have people in all corners of the world with all kinds of specialties mm-hmm. who can say, hey, wait a minute, I think I know why that's 3%. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, finally, TK. TK is what you put when, when you're like... To come? Yeah, when you haven't filled in. I think it's, I think it's anonymous. Uh, TK, if that's your real initials, wrote, Hi, TNT crew. I was listening to various netcasts regarding Nokia and Microsoft announcements, uh, and I, I thought that you had ignored, or netcast seemed to ignore, the fact that Palm adopted Windows Mobile a couple years before shipping the Pre. Remember, the, the trio came with Windows Mobile. After the pre-announcement, I thought Palm had really just bought time so that they could announce the web OS. Could Nokia and Microsoft be a similar situation? Nokia let vast majority of engineers go to focus its energy on their next ecosystem. To buy some time, they made a deal with Microsoft. I was extremely puzzled with this arrangement at first until I remembered Palm. That's, a, that's an interesting idea. If Nokia, Because Nokia is trying to be cagey about Mego, saying, we haven't given up on Mego. It's going to be the disruptive. It kept using the word disruptive to mm-hmm. describe it in his Mobile World Congress announcement. That may be the plan. But with Microsoft allegedly putting in billions of dollars uh, into this agreement with Nokia, I don't see that being realistic. Well, but if, if, if they're if saying, Microsoft was just yeah, if they're putting in billions of dollars for agreement. the lifetime of Windows Phone 7, mm-hmm. and then it's all over, you know, new agreement has to be struck for Windows Phone 8 or whatever the next one is right, called, right. then that could be the time that they need to develop Mego and go, okay, great. Thank you for the Windows Phone 7 deal. We're not going to re-up. I don't think that seems realistic on the part of Microsoft. Nokia, mm-hmm. sure. But why? But you don't sign a deal forever. No. So there's got to be an end date, at which point... Either party could leave. I, I guess you're right. I still think it's... I think it's intriguing. I think it it's may intriguing. Not be, it may not be likely. Yeah. You're right. But it, it, you it's never intriguing. know. TK might know more than we do.
Hopefully we can get Simon Dingle some bandwidth uh, in Spain. Anyone uh, out there living in Spain, send him some bandwidth. He's in Barcelona. He Just needs it. go around asking for Simon. You'll find him. Uh, we'll try to get him <laughs> on the show tomorrow and get his uh, his experience from Mobile World Congress. Thanks, everybody, for watching. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. You can give us an email. You can actually send us an email. You don't have to print it out and bring us to us. You can just send it over the Internet. The address is TNT at twit.tv. And give us a call using your telephone if you would like. 260-TNT-SHOW is the phone number. We'll talk to you tomorrow. He's saving Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this sounds like a cheerlead. Palm, palms Total routine. Total cheerleading song. Let's, let's, let's go, come on! It is my great pleasure to present to you Robocop, 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 Robocop. Robocop, what is he? Robocop, who is he? Robocop, Robocop. Oh. Where does he come from? Wow. Detroit needs Robocop. Detroit needs Robocop. Detroit needs Robocop. Some cheer routines. I think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, you guys get the idea. That's uh, that's some funky tunes. And that's, I gotta isn't say. that fun and funky? Yeah.